Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to have a look at a particular style of credit card knife and discuss the legality of it. So first let's go to an old article here. It uh, notes video credit card knives illegal because they don't look like a knife. Now I saved this from 2015. It doesn't appear to be online anymore. Uh, I don't have the video unfortunately but they note that what they're talking about is knives of this sort of design. And I have one here, which is a bit of a spoiler to the whole uh, thing. Now, what the uh, Royal Newfoundland Constabulary says is they say uh, that they've seized at the time, which was 2015, 79 uh, credit card knives, which they confiscated from two people who are selling them online. And they go on to say, these weapons have no other function that we can think of other than a dangerous purpose. And now I'll just note that sometimes the police aren't necessarily the best at thinking of functions for things. And thankfully the test does not involve what the police can think of because the imagination of the police is not a limiting factor in the law. They say under the criminal code of Canada, any blades with less than 30 centimeters that is concealed and doesn't appear to be a knife is a prohibited weapon. It's not actually a correct statement of the legal test. So we'll go on and look at that. And they note, someone caught with a credit card knife on their person can be charged criminally under the criminal code for carrying a prohibited weapon. Come at me, boys. I'll explain why. And if you do want to come at me, just call me up and tell me there's no need to kick in my door, but I'll explain why these things are, uh, in my view, legal. So first, let's sort of have a look at this uh, item. You can sort of see what it looks like. You can see what it looks like from the edges. It's a fairly thick, fairly bulky item. Because it's got these folds, it doesn't tend to lay flat. It's substantially thicker than a credit card. And you can see the folding pieces as well as from one side, you can see the blade. From the other, you can see that, you know, it's got sort of folding segments. So let's have a look, first of all, at the law here. So the law states prohibited weapon means, and first is a knife that has a blade that opens automatically by gravity or centrifugal force or by hand pressure. I can tell you this thing does not open automatically. There are several steps required. Or B, any weapon other than a firearm that is prescribed to be a prohibited weapon. So as a starting point, in order to meet the definition of prohibited weapon, it has to be a weapon. So let's have a look at what weapon means. And if you've been watching, this is possibly old hat, but let's go through it. Weapon means anything used. So if you actually use it as a weapon. Designed to be used. So that's talking about how this thing was designed by the manufacturer or intended for use. That's in terms of why you're carrying it. Now that can be established by either you admitted something to the police or possibly from context, you know, if you've got a tire iron and it's in the trunk of your car with your spare, it's probably going to be viewed as not intended for use as a weapon. If you've got that same tire iron and you're, you know, banging on the door of your ex-wife for whom, you know, with whom you have a rocky relationship, then maybe they'll think it's a weapon. So context matters there. But they say, uh, in causing death or injury to any person or for the purpose of threatening or intimidating any purpose or person rather. And without restricting the generality of the foregoing includes a firearm and anything used for binding or tying up a person against their will. Neat. Okay. So as a starting point, we want to know, is this thing a weapon? And well, we want to know about the design features because that'll help tell us you know, if this thing was designed for use as a covert weapon, then absolutely we might be in some trouble. Let's have a look at what the designer says. Now, the one I've got is a bit of a cheap knockoff, but the originals were designed by uh, Ian Sinclair. And here's the web page. And it notes, just three ingenious folding operations turn the card into an elegant pocket utility tool. Good start. Now, they say three operations. I actually count four operations, although just three of them are folding operations. I'll show you how this thing folds out in a moment. But they note uh, first innovation in pen knives since the first folding knife. Now they go on to talk about why it was developed. This is really handy. Card Sharp was originally designed as a lightweight surgical knife that can be easily transported and safely disposed of 
by hospitals and medical centers, together with paramedics and aid workers throughout the world, without needing expensive and wasteful sharps containers. So, designed as a surgical knife, not, a, and I mean, admittedly, a surgical knife is for cutting people, but not like in the way of defending yourself. Let's go on and have a little bit uh, further look here. They say it's a great chef's knife because the blade is sharp and it's useful for cutting thin slices of vegetables, including tomatoes, cucumbers, garlic, etc. Great for camping and expedition use. It's an essential outdoor companion slash survival tool. I will tell you that the word weapon appears precisely never in this. They don't advertise it as a weapon. They don't sell it as a weapon. They don't market it as a weapon. There's no talk of it being useful as a weapon. So in the first step, in terms of what is it designed for, it doesn't appear that it's designed for a weapon. It appears that it's designed as a useful tool. But maybe we shouldn't stop there because we should look at sort of the other features of this thing. So here I'm going to stop and just show you a little bit of video of how this thing folds out and come back. So here you can see the front surface, the blade is clearly visible. And on the back surface, it's not, you can't see the blade, but it's clearly something unusual. So the first step is to remove the locking feature and then one fold, two fold, three fold, and this requires a little bit of pressing to get it to uh, stay closed. All right. So in terms of a self-defense item, this thing is not terribly great because it requires a number of steps, which somebody who's attacking you is unlikely to let you go through. I mean, they might let you go through the step of, hey, here's my wallet, because they might want that wallet but they're not likely to let you go through the next step of let me open up my wallet and take out this item and then fold it several times in order to produce a small uh, small knife blade. Now, once we actually have this thing assembled, you'd notice, you know, if you've got this thing in your hand, first of all, it doesn't hold together all that well. And that's true both of this cheap knockoff and of the, uh, the real thing. Uh, this bit here where you can see it sort of attaches with little uh, little studs that fit into holes, that doesn't hold up to much force. If, if you were using this in a defensive or offensive situation, you've got a very real possibility that that thing's going to pop open and now your blade's going, oh, oh no, that's not what you want in a, you know, an offensive or defensive weapon. It is fairly sharp. Uh, now, so could you potentially put this to use as a weapon? Possibly, but in terms of this versus the knives I use as dinner knives, the dinner knives would actually be a better choice. This thing is not great in terms of its design features for use as a weapon. So I don't think that the design is such that it's uh, intended as a weapon and it just wouldn't be all that great for that purpose. But that doesn't, you know, so that, in and of itself should be an answer to the question because prohibited weapon means any weapon that is prescribed to be a prohibited weapon. So if this thing's not a weapon, end of story. But let's go on and look at what they're actually talking about with respect to knife combs because that's uh, in our law for some reason. So any device having a length of less than 30 centimeters and resembling an innocuous object but designed to conceal a knife or blade, including the device commonly known as the knife comb, being a comb with the handle of the comb forming a handle for the knife and any similar device. So this, I went and tried to see what was actually sort of in the law on this, and there's not a whole lot of case law that actually covers this particular issue. But when we think of, you know, a knife comb is, you know, it's an actual knife that's designed to look like a comb. So when we think about the innocuous object portion of this, we're talking about something that is, look, you know, designed to look like a particular kind of innocuous object. It's resembling sort of a real world thing. Whereas at best you could say, maybe I don't know what this is from a distance. But when you get to whether this resembles some other sort of innocuous object, really clearly not. And the reason for that is when we compare it to, you know, an actual credit card, and I'm not going to show much of the credit card here, but, you know, a credit card has numbers printed on the front and often has a little 
you know, the RFID chip. It has a bank logo. It has all those things. None of those appear on this. And in fact, on the sort of genuine article, it's got a bunch of printing that indicates what it is, including the word knife. So that doesn't seem to be that innocuous when we get down to it. Uh, there's no magnetic stripe on this. There's no any of the typical things that suggest a credit card as opposed to a knife. Uh, it is substantially, if we sort of hold it edge on, you can see that it is substantially thicker than a credit card. I wouldn't mistake this for a credit card even in the dark. You just wouldn't. It's got little gaps. So you can see my face through the gaps. And, whoop, sorry, I should do that again where you can actually see. So you can see my face through the gaps because there are holes cut in it. Again, not a feature of an actual credit card. So the resemblance to a credit card is superficial at best. Uh, even in the dark, if I'm able to handle this thing, I wouldn't, you know, confuse it. I can't see confusing this for a credit card. You know, if you handed this to a, a store owner or something and said, I'm going to pay with this, or if you held this up to a store owner and said, I'm going to be paying with this, there's no store owner that wouldn't think that you were holding up a knife as opposed to an actual credit card. So when we think about this as compared to the example that they give, which is a knife comb, it doesn't seem to be in the same category. It doesn't seem to, you know, it's not a disguised uh, item, which is what they're talking about in that prohibition order. They're talking about things that are disguised as something innocent. There's no disguising here. The only reason it's in this shape is to make it easily carryable in a wallet. So that doesn't seem to me to be, to meet the test. Now, again, if the RCMP thinks I'm wrong, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll go turn myself in. I'll bring you the evidence and we can have a court case over this, but I don't see that this remotely gets close to the definition. So in my view, the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary there is just flat out wrong. I don't see how this actually, uh, how this actually fits their definition. Now I note here as well, I'm just going to flip back to the uh, Ian Sinclair's webpage. They say they currently sell and ship their products to the following countries and territories, but an asterisk means we currently cannot sell knives to customers in this country. And Canada has an asterisk. So I don't know if they had some of their knives seized and that's why they've got that uh, down. Um, if so, it wouldn't be the first time that Canadian Border Services got a little seizure happy. Um, so I don't know. I did reach out to uh, Ian Sinclair's company there just to see if they were uh, willing to provide a bit more background details. They never got back to me, so it's still their option as to whether or not they want to get in touch with me. But if they do, I'll post a follow-up. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this has been educational, informative. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if it has. I want to thank $50 Patreon supporters George and Demo, as well as $30 Patreon supporter Steve Browning, and $10 Patreon supporters my buddy Keith, Process Eng, Stephen Larson, Mark D, General Counsel of the CCFR, John Robinson, Tim Rogers, Roy Haddock, Frackles Dak, Jean Alexandre Tessier, Cameron Johnson, Sir Goat, Sights and Arms Limited, Chaba Hollow, Peter H, Craig Kwan, Akin Coxall, North Central Process Service, Toys Are for Boys, Ian Vaughn, Milan Vrakic, Terence Griffiths, Doug Thompson, Brad Crooker, Jason Harrington, Lee Kiso, Mark Stout, Michelle Stutzel, Scott Sweetman, Mike Rhodes, Alvaro Bataille, DF, Stacey C. Cartmel, uh, Tactical Advantage TV Canada, uh, a donator who wishes to remain anonymous, Ian S., Dave Leslie, Juan, Donald Duncan, Stefan Conquist, Darren Duell, uh, Kevin, Sean Crane. Thank you all. Uh, this, your support makes this possible. So thank you once again, and I hope you're armed with knowledge.